I'm going to show you how to build a dipole antenna. Um, this could be for any handband. I'm going to build this one particularly for 160 meters. I just built uh, an 80 meter one right here on the ground. I'll show you that at the end. I also will show you the launcher we use, the type of rope we use, and where we get these side mounts from. So right here is a Budwig Ballon. Um, I don't know if they make them anymore, but these are pretty good. They're cheap, 20 bucks or less. You can probably get them almost at any ham fest. Not sure if DX Engineering carries these, but you can get Ballon from DX Engineering. I don't know if you can get them for 20 bucks. Uh, but this is just a typical one-to-one, -one, uh, 50 ohm, um, just to feed your coax to. So, right here is a side mount. And this side mount is uh, on a Roan 25 tower, but it's specifically made for Roan 45. So, I'm just showing this for presentation reasons. So, I got my side mount here. I got my rope coming up through the pulley. But you, know, you don't necessarily have to put a dipole on a tower. It could be in a tree or anything like that. That's why I'm going to show you the launcher here on, on how, how to launch. I'm not going to show you in this presentation how to launch over a tree, but I'm just going to show you the, the launcher itself and where you can get it from. So again, this is just the, 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 the connection point, the one-to-one. -one. You're going to put your coax in here, and you're going to run it into your shack. Okay? Over here, I already have my tape measure rolled out. It's rolled out to 130 feet. So you take um, the frequency of 1.85 and you divide it by 468 and you come to about 126 feet on each leg. It's a total of 252 feet and like 11 inches. So we're just gonna make this 128 feet long each leg we can always cut it back if we have to trim it a little bit. So let me do the next wire. I already did one for you, so let me do the next one here. So I'm gonna get my good wire. This wire right here is from DX Engineering. Um, 14 insulator, it's very insulated, it's very strong. I buy it in a thousand foot spool. And you, you could buy, you know, any wire, you could buy it in Home Depot. Don't use speaker wire, but use good gauge wire 12, 14, I wouldn't go any lighter than 14 because it'll break when you get ice. So 12 or 14 would be typically good. And I'm gonna hook this up here. Just like this. Looks like the mailman just came. Now, I'm gonna put my little pipe through the wire here. I'm gonna roll this out. And here we go. Good thing you didn't run over my thing. I'm, I'm out here measuring. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, good thing he paid attention here. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the 128 foot mark here. If you look at my tape measure, 128. And uh, grab my snippers here. Okay, grab both of them, make them tight. And uh, here we go. One twenty eight. Okay. Now I have two wires at one twenty eight. That'll bring it to two fifty six. But we know two fifty two is the magic number we're looking for. So let me go up to my ballon here, grab a piece of wire, and I'll show you. Let me grab my torch. Grab the torch. So now we have everything laid out here. So basically, we have the rope going through the pulley. We have the uh, attachment point here. 
for the for the dipole. So we're going to grab one wire, just like this. Bring it over to the bud wig. I'm going to feed it up and through like this and put a knot. Put a knot because you want to take the strain relief off the wire in this, this uh, rod coming out, the post. So you don't want any pressure on that. Put the pressure on the hole here on the plastic part of the bud wig. Now that I got the remainder of the wire out, which is a little long, so what I'm gonna do is, what I do with my snippers, up here they are. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut this back a little bit because we already know we got more than enough. And I'm gonna take off a good inch, a good inch here. So here we go, we take that off. And here we go. Okay. We got ourselves a good inch there. And now we're just gonna come up. I'm going to come around like this. Okay, now we go get the other one. And we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to come up to the... to the balance feed point here. Again, make a knot. Just like so. Make it nice and tight. So it takes all the strain off of the post. Same thing. Gonna strip it back. Take a little bit off. Take this off a little bit. Now remember, you don't have to be precise here. You just want to get the this, this part all done and then you can do the trimming at the end for the frequency with an analyzer. And I'll show you what we use for an analyzer. So there you go. Now I got both sides attached. Now we have to solder it. Very simple. I use this butane torch right here. I get this from uh, Home Depot, it's called burns -Omatic. Put your little butane in there. You come up here and you basically heat it up on this little rod right here. And then you just let the solder flow right in there. Watch it just flow right in. There it goes. And uh, you know, you wanna make sure you get enough flow in there. Let it just flow right in here. And then I come over to the other side and do the same thing. I don't want to burn the wire, so I'm going to turn this back a little bit. There you go, like that. I'm heating it up. And the same thing here. Just let it flow right in there. this. Now heat it all up and let it just flow right in. And that's it. That's a solid connection. Let that uh, cool down. Come on over here. You can see when this thing is up in the air and I'm pulling on it, it's not pulling on the two posts. It's just pulling on the uh, plastic part of the bud wig and this is strong because I've had these up for a number of years but I do the knot trick you want to take the strain relief off you don't want the strain any strain on the on the post itself or the wire there so the knot's going to hold it in place okay so now that this is done the next thing you're going to want to do is of course you're going to want to launch this thing into a tree or however you're going to put the dipole up it could be on a mast on a roof but you're gonna want it attached. So uh, there's a couple ways of doing it. First is 
you can buy one of these launchers, the tennis ball launcher. Um, I've been using this for a number of years. You basically put your air in here, you pump it up, you get it to 60, 80 pounds, you come over here, you hit the trigger. We actually have a short video on that. Um, if you look if you look on uh, Radio Echo Productions or Ham Radio Productions, you'll see us uh, doing this in live. You can see the tennis balls in there. And uh, basically what we do is we attach this line, which is already attached to the tennis ball, shoot it up, it unwinds, goes over the tree, okay? The name of the company that we get it from, I don't know if they're still in business, called AntennaLauncher.com. And the one we have here is the CSV-19. The way I do it is because most of my locations are towers. Some of them aren't, so we do use the launcher from time to time. We use these side mounts. These things are great because you can get you off the tower. The twist, it's got a twist here so you can uh, whatever if the dipole is going to go this way or if the dipole is going to go this way you got your little pulley here swivel pulley which is great the name of this company is called ss solutions they're on uh i think they're on ebay ss solutions and uh, these side pulleys are 45 bucks trust me i'm not going to be able to the material alone for me to go and buy this and drill the holes is and then get the pulley 45 bucks is a bargain trust me um so we use those to mount to the tower and then of course you're going to want to use good rope i highly recommend the mass trant rope it actually comes out of europe i think germany maybe or or, or some one of the one of the countries out there in europe and uh it's real strong i actually guy booms here i could show you right here here's an antenna that we just built this is a gxp seven element seven bander and this is the heavy version of the mass trans we actually guide booms of antennas and elements with it so very strong rope lasts a long time um weather resistant and uh, comes let me see where the name of the company is here it doesn't tell me the company name but you can get it from dx engineering out of uh, ohio dxengineering.com so again let me do a recap you take the the frequency and you divide it by 468 then you get the total length of the wire in this case it was 252 feet so that was 126 feet per leg i made them 128 okay um, I'm going to trim it when I get to the location. This is for a customer of mine, a customer of mine that I'm going to be do, installing this whole system right here for him uh, next week. We're putting up an 80-foot tower for him. Like I said, I'm in the, in the tower business. So f the name of my company is Radio Echo Communications. And we specifically just work in the New England area in New York. And, uh, you know, you can use almost anything for an insulator at the end. Um... I use these little uh, fence wire insulators. You can get them in tractor supply. I don't know, they're like a couple dollars. I think you could buy them in a bag. And you just basically tie it. You put your rope around it. You put your rope around here and just go to a tree or however you're gonna do it. Um, this particular install is gonna be an inverted V, 160. It's gonna be at about 80 feet. Um, it should work pretty good for the customer. And then of course you, you put your coax in here. Um, for 160 meters, we're going to use RG213. We're going to run it from the top of the tower down to a DX engineering switch at the base. And so what we've done here is I built the 160 invert. It's going to be an inverted V dipole. And I have just built the 80 meter. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can put, you can tape, tape the post up if you want. If you don't want, I mean, this is solid connection here but you could you could you can water seal this if you want put some tape around it or coax seal of course you're going to put your your coax in here and then you know you're going to go up to a tree you're going to put your rope through here you shoot your launcher up over a tree and, and and you're good to go so building a dipole is very simple it's just getting the right material so you need a you need a bud wig um you need uh Wire, wire, you need rope, 
and you need coax. And uh, that's how you do it. Of course, you need a tape measure. You want to have a tape measure that gets you the, uh, the total distance here. In this case, it was 126 feet. So, thank you very much for watching the video. Appreciate it. And uh, there's more videos about things like this on, on, this, on this YouTube channel. Uh, please visit our other uh, posts and videos. We have a lot of content. Thanks for watching. Ray, W2RE.